In southern Illinois, in southern Illinois, they found what they believed to be the Phoenician's gold. Um, this was a um, a treasure chest. It was all sorts of diamonds, weapons of war, spears, bronze, arrowheads, a lot of Native American, Phoenician, Egyptian, and then they believe also the Semitic Hebrew artifacts that was found in this cave. They were found by men. His name was Jack Barrows. Um, this is a, a coin, a numismatic. It's all gold of Rex. As you can see, Juba. The I and the V in language, those letters are always interchangeable with the letters J and U. But um, I want to know about this gold because if you look at the seals of these gold coins, which you can see the elephant, that's the seal for Cleopatra in, in Egypt and Greece. And this seal here is the seal of Tanit. Tanit was a Phoenician Canaan, Canaanite goddess. Um, she looked what you would call like a, if you ever seen a picture of Little Kim. And this seal they, they took um, can be found everywhere across the world. But this goal, if you can look at this title, is saying, Send $150,000 of gold, right? What did this man, Russell Burroughs, know about the gold found in these caves? He has a lot of um, content on the web you can find. Um, there's a video here. I mean, it's, a, it's one for the ages. It's called Burroughs Cave Lecture by Russ Burroughs himself. It's a, a, a video you must see. But I want to know because inside these caves, they're what you call... Crips. Crips are like a, a long, a long stone chambers, long hallways, filled with um, tombs and sacrifices and caskets. And there's 13 crypts. And there goes to number 13. Russell, whom he admitted that when he found the cave, he stumbled upon it when he was searching for. Um, precious metals. He had his metal detector and he was up in the mountains in Illinois searching for gold and he happened to fall into this cave. He fell into a treasure chest. And this is a man that helped him along the way, which is Jack Ward. But you can see he has the gold numismatics and that's a gold Phoenician ship. You know, the um, if you know history, you know the Phoenicians were master seamen merchants and they had all the connections to the um, sea routes and the trade routes to the Americas in fact um, the Queen Hop Shipsit stated that she when she died she wanted to go to a faraway land to the west which she was aboriginal to and any time during her reign and rulership she wanted to go to the west by ship she would get the trade routes from the Phoenicians and the Minoans and um, there they would connect with the uh, Olmecs and that's how they would bring the chocolate back to to um, the east in Africa if you don't know the vanilla and the chocolate is primarily cultivated in the Americas and it was something called cacao I don't know if you can see cacao looks a little like the word cocoa but the Almecs were masters of the chocolate and interestingly enough the, the question becomes the question becomes who were these people running from or running to what were they trying to get away from if you can look here, you can see this is a uh, inscribed stone from the cave. And the Hebrew sign for Yahweh is defined at the top. It looks like cuneiform writing, Semitic, maybe Aramaic. It's a very ancient script. And this is also a stone that was found in the cave. And much of the things that this man stumbled upon, he said he had left intact and he didn't want to touch, but... If you get the chance, you can check out the, the video because it's, it's something you definitely need to know. Now, this was um, also found in the cave. If you look here, it's a picture of a, uh, a Carthaginian. Carthaginian is obviously Carthage. Carthage is Hannibal, Mauritania, the Moors. 
Um, they were also connected in rulership with the Canaanites, Phoenicians. And it says, the seven long locks in his hair, this figure is from southern Illinois. The site identify him as a Hebrew scholar. And note the representation of the Torah scroll above his head. But also, there's a um, scripture here, Judges 16, 13, that's about the seven locks of Samson, which is a uh, spiritual esoteric teaching has a meaning where when Delilah sheared the seven locks of Samson, that was symbolic of the seven phases of the moon. Obviously, you know the moon goes through seven phases. Seven and seven is close to the numbers, uh, 14, or 13 and 14, and Money is called silver. Silver is uh, a Greek goddess called Luna, but the dollar sign S is where money comes from in those seven phases of the moon, which was the calendar of the Hebrews. Is on. It's why the money is disseminated on the 15th, but the uh, seven shears of Samson, though that those teaching is it's, um, more so a spiritual kind of a metaphysical thing I, I can't go too deep into it but it's um basically um your hair or your locks is like vitality or sturdiness and so the vital principle when you take it away you take away the strength that weakens the body and finally you perish as a man they say when you give up the essence of the of the spiritual for the pleasure of bodily or physical physical world sensations that's like committing spiritual suicide and so um, I can't go too deep into it because it'll take away from the subject but um, just notice the uh, numerology there with the number seven they also found as you can see the star of David on a, a, a stone in this cave there's a man with a yarmulke and you can see there's the six-pointed hexagram star of Yahweh or David or the Mogan David. That's where Mogan David wine gets his symbology from. But the um, it says here, the variation of seven locks. The hair is drawn back in a braid and is shown in this profile. And this is a man. He is a student of Hebrew but not yet a scholar. So some of these findings, I mean, they're just extremely profound. It's all sorts of different nations, and one of them, as you can see, is um, a map stone of the Mississippi. So whoever had these stones, they was leaving a, um, a sea, a, a, a river, the, the sea route of the river route from the Mississippi that they take to travel all the way from the east, which is another controversial question you know why did they come all the way from uh, you know Africa North Africa to get all the way up to the caves in Miss uh, in Illinois this one is a real interesting one um, if you know anything about history you can see that's the symbol for the Canaanites the Phoenicians in his ear and then there's uh, the circle and the cross the, the cryptic cross you used to see that in the Celtic in the Druids, they use that symbol, but it says here, this portrait is of a possible Carthaginian priest, and he has an earring emblazoned with the image of Tanit. And so, yeah, Carthage, you know, that's um, Hannibal. Hannibal is the one who rode up on the elephants in the Alps to fight against the Romans, but usually when you'd see priests like this with their head shaved, they were priests of the cult Isis in most cases. Not saying that this is the case for him, but that's the uh, history behind that. But um, yeah, there's a lot of um, different artifacts and connections. And of these 13 crypts, burrows, he believes belongs to the, the Uchi Indians. Yep, he believes they belong to that uh, indigenous tribe. And um, also, in the caves, he sa he speculates, and he says that it, it's almost certain that they the caves travel from southern Illinois or Kentucky all the way to Illinois, and that's kind of relative to the hollow earth, right? But here's another interesting fact they have here. Another artifact, as you can see. 
you can see the stones. This is um, they believe to be a Carthaginian. They were connected with the Moors of Mauritania. And then also this is interesting because they believe that these particular stones were of possible possibly soldiers. I mean, what have you, it's a, a lot of um, things that need to be uncovered and discussed. But you can also find the portraits of the natives in here. Let me see if I can find it. Okay, so uh, it's a Native American portrayed on the Burroughs Cave Stone. It may be the ancestors of the Uchi Indians who preserved the folk memory of the cave into the 20th century. But yeah, many questions I raised about these findings. And um, yeah, here's one for you. Here's a book you should read. How about that? The Lost Treasures of King Juba. The Evidence of Africans in America Before Columbus. Yeah, Frank Joseph. I'll show you who Frank Joseph is. Oh, yeah. He's a Nazi. Oh, NSPA. Nazi Socialist Party of America. How's that for some enlightenment, right? You got the Nazis giving you the history about the uh, lost Phoenicians, Egyptians, and the Israelites and the Gnostics in the cave in the Americas. You know, the question is, what were they doing? As you can see, this is a gold medallion of the Phoenician ship. They found this in the cave, and the man is holding the uh, that same ship in his hand. That's Jack Ward. He helped excavate at the tomb. But, um, yeah, what were they doing there? What were, who were they running f from? I'm willing to bet that an empire fell and then power exchanged hands and they basically ran to the west almost like a, a safe haven as a paradise to try to escape, you know, being caught. 